And now stay tuned for the program that is rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the whistler's strange story. Element X. An interesting and sometimes dangerous part of living is the unexpected, the oddity of chance. Circumstances beyond our control. It was chance that brought Grant Forbes out of a downtown building at almost the same time that his friend Lieutenant Driscoll of Homicide was passing by. Yes, Grant, chance brought you two together that day, didn't it? And as the two of you continued along the sidewalk, neither of you had any thought of the sudden violent action that was to burst forth as you rounded a certain street corner. But as you did so... Hello, bro, shoot! What is it? Get back, Grant. Back against the wall. Come on. Get over here. All right. It's a robbery. Looks like one of our patrolmen winged somebody. All right, keep back, folks. Get back. Give me the officer a chance. What's it all about, officer? Huh? Oh, Lieutenant Driscoll. Hold up, sir. And somebody called you in time? No, nope, nobody called me. Funny thing, I didn't even realize what was going on. Just happened to wander into Mr. Reynolds' store to get some cigarettes. This guy turns up, starts to run out, and Reynolds yells. We heard the rest. Good work, officer. Oh, nothing to it, Lieutenant. It just happened. <laughs> You know, it's a funny thing, Grant. What's that? I don't know if it happens in your law cases, but the way that hold-up artist got caught, I call it Element X. How do you mean? Element X, the unexpected, the surprise. Like the way that cop walked in on it. Exactly. Or sometimes maybe it's a woman who happens to be looking out the window, talking to a neighbor. She gets a look at a license plate and notices the color of a car and... Yeah, I'd rather be on this side of the law. Oh, I don't know, Lieutenant. Element X can be taken care of, figured out. Mm. These hoods ought to consult a good lawyer first. Instead of later, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Grant, I've seen it too often. You can't beat the unpredictable. It's what I always look for in a case. Here's my car. Drop you someplace, Counselor? Counselor? That's a laugh. I haven't counseled three people in the last month. Come on, hop in. Uh, no, thanks, Lieutenant. Maybe that wounded guy back there is a possible client. Oh, cut it out, Grant. Things aren't that bad. Anyway, we got him nailed. Yeah, I suppose. Okay, Lieutenant, I'll let you drop me off at my so-called office. Good. You know, you may be right about your element X at that. Hmm? Now what? I I wasn't expecting a ride. <laughs> okay, okay, have your fun. But I still say there's a lot to it. It was many weeks after you talked to your friend, Lieutenant Driscoll, wasn't it, Grant? Yes, and they were weeks that seemed like months. And then came that phone call that was to make so much difference. 
Um, uh, what, what was that name again? Markham. Uh, Floyd Markham. I'd, uh, like for you to drop out here to Malibu, Mr. Forbes. Uh, discuss a certain, uh, domestic matter. You won't be in town the next few days, Mr. Markham. Look, Forbes, if you'd prefer that I contact another attorney... Oh, no, no, no. I- I'll be there. Malibu, you say? Uh, that's right. You know the turn-off just past sunset? Yes, I do. Uh, my place is all by itself, just past that signal oil station on the beachfront. Red Cottage, Flagstone Front. It's called Surfside. You'll be here? I'll be there. Tonight, please. Ten sharp. Tonight, ten sharp. Check. You've little choice, have you, Grant? Too few of your clients believe in paying their bills on time. And Floyd Markham sounds like a man with a problem and a man with money. That night, you're right on time and approaching his secluded cottage on the waterfront. When you see someone slipping out of a side door, a woman, you step back in the shadows as she runs past you to a parked car. Then you hurry into the cottage. Dear, dear. Mr. Markham. Dear, dear, please. What have you done? Dear, dear. Mr. Markham. Dear, dear. Dear, dear. You know at a glance that the man at your feet is true, don't you, Grant? You stoop down quickly and beside him, rummage through his wallet as he continues to mumble dazedly. His identification tells you for certain that he's Floyd Markham, the man who sent for you. And you're afraid it's too late to find out why. But there is something you must know, isn't there? Yes, because you've certainly walked into something. You lean very close to Markham, call in his ear. Mr. Markham, who was it? Who is Lydia? Dear, dear, Lydia, my wife. Your wife, Lydia Markham, she shot you, ran out of here. Yes, Lydia, Lydia. Mr. Markham, Mr. Markham. So long, Mr. Markham. You know, I just might show your little Lydia... How to get around element X. Are you a missing driver? I mean, a driver who is missing something? You are if you're not powering your car with Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. One thing you're missing is that good mileage, which has made Signal gasoline known throughout seven western states as the go-farther gasoline. But equally important, you're missing the clean-cut, efficient performance, which makes Signal's good mileage possible. You see, such good mileage is only possible because Signal gasoline helps your engine run so efficiently, you save gasoline three ways. One, you save gasoline with Signal's quick starting. Two, you save gasoline with Signal's smooth, obedient pickup, free from balking and hesitation. Three, you save gasoline with Signal's lively power that gets you into high gear fast, helps you stay there with a minimum of shifting on hills or in traffic. So you see, there's no need to go on missing either economical mileage or satisfying performance. They're like birds of a feather. They go together. You can enjoy both by filling up with Signal. The famous go-farther gasoline. Well, Grant, your visit to the Malibu cottage of Floyd Markham, the way you walked in on his murder was right along the lines of your friend Lieutenant Driscoll's theories about Element X, the unforeseen. The surprise that so often goes against criminals, murderers. It would go very badly now for Lydia Markham, too, wouldn't it? If you decided to play on the side of the lieutenant. But you haven't decided it that way, have you? No. Instead, you let a week go by. A week of watching the newspapers to see what the police know. A week in which Floyd Markham's funeral takes place, with his wife putting in an appearance as a grief-stricken, confused widow. And then you decide to pay a call on Lydia Markham. You look up the address, 
a fashionable Los Angeles apartment. You stand calmly at the door, wait until Lydia herself appears in answer to the buzzer. Yes? Mrs. Markham? Yes? I, um, I would like to talk to you on behalf of a client of mine. Oh, my card. Grant Forbes, counselor at law. Uh, permit me but... to explain, Mrs. Markham. My client was a witness to a, well, a sort of an accident. A shooting, I believe. Ralph. Ralph! Huh? What's the matter, hon? Uh, who's this? A Mr. Forbes. Grant Forbes. Counselor at law. Ralph, I... I think we should talk to him. All right, we'll talk to him. Come in, Mr. Forbes. Thank you. Uh, I'm Ralph Leonard. You should know, too, that Mrs. Markham has undergone a strain. You see, her husband... Just... I know about the late, Mr. Markham. Oh? Well, look, what is this? A bad debt pitch or something? I've heard about this sort of thing when a man dies. I'm I would prefer I... to talk to Mrs. Markham in private, if it's agreeable. No. No, it isn't agreeable. Ralph, Mr. Leonard was my husband's closest friend. You can say whatever you have to say to both of us. You understand? Mm, yes, I do understand. However, under the circumstances, Mrs. Markham... Get to the point, Forbes. You're quite certain, Mrs. Markham, that uh, under no... No matter what the situation might be, you, you don't mind, Mr. Leonard? She's quite certain. I'm asking Mrs. Markham. Really, Mr. Forbes, this all seems... Well, most unusual, to say the least. It is most unusual, to say the least. Well? Whatever you have to say, Ralph can hear it, too. All right. <clears throat> Mrs. Markham, Mr. Leonard, my client, who must at the moment be nameless, he um, observed some interesting things on a certain night about ten days ago. More specifically, it was the night that Mr. Markham... Ralph, Ralph what's he telling us? The night that Mr. Markham... Um, how did the newspapers phrase it? Oh, yes. Died at the hands of a person or persons... Unknown. Your uh, client, counselor, he thinks this should have been phrased differently? He would only change the one word. Unknown. Uh-huh. Ralph. Take it easy, Lydia. Okay, counselor. Okay? You mean that if my client should require a slight fee for his talent? I mean get out of here. Oh, you're making a mistake, Mr. Leonard. You're making a mistake if you don't get out. You haven't any client... You're just a cheap, low shyster. Lower than a murderess, Mr. Leonard? Supposing I told you there's a half a dozen witnesses who'd swear your client was wrong, lying. Money buys many things, Mr. Leonard. In Mrs. Markham's interest, I would say it might be less expensive to buy one closed mouth rather than six perjured ones. I'll decide what's best for Mrs. Markham's interest. Very well. My client won't like this, however. Good day, counselor. Perhaps the last good day... For Mrs. Markham. Oh, relax, Mr. Leonard. I'm going. You walk out of the apartment, Grant. You're not sure, are you? Not sure how stubborn Ralph Leonard intends to be. And then, as you're waiting for the elevator to take you down... Mr. Forbes. Oh, Mrs. Markham. I, I slipped out the service door. I haven't much time. Only please, please tell your client that... Well, to wait a few days. To wait a few days? I, I'll arrange something. I mean about the fee. Oh, yes. Uh, you have my card, Mrs. Markham. I'll hear from you soon. Very soon. I promise. Uh, Mrs. Markham. Yes? If this is a stall, something to get me off guard while your uh, dear friend Ralph figures out how to get me out of the way... Oh, no, no, I give you my word. He doesn't even know I'm out here. Now, please, Mr. Forbes, trust me. Oh, I'm the trusting sort, Mrs. Markham. Very much so. All right. I'll give you what you ask. A few days. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good day, Mrs. Markham. I'll be looking forward to making any reasonable settlement for my client. Riding down in the elevator, you feel better about it, don't you, Gran? Ralph Leonard is a little on the rough side and rather impulsive. You find out exactly how impulsive early that evening as you park your car and start down the street toward your apartment. The shots scatter into the building wall beside you. You fall quickly to the ground. 
As you look up, a car with Ralph Leonard at the wheel swerves wildly around the corner. And as you get to your feet, you realize grimly that Ralph Leonard has decided to make certain of your silence, however drastic his method. You're afraid to return to your office, and you decide it would be unwise to stay overnight in your own apartment. Room, sir? Yes, for just a couple of days. Three dollars, sir. Did you sign? Yes. Tom Anderson. Uh-huh. Your key, Mr. Anderson. Room 406. Thanks. It's all you can do for the present, isn't it, Grant? Hide in a cheap hotel room under the name of Tom Anderson while you think things out. Ralph Leonard is a problem, isn't he? A serious one. He's out to kill you, to protect Lydia Markham, and perhaps her money as well. But the following day, you hit upon a neat and simple plan for eliminating Ralph, without risk to yourself. You're unaware, of course, as you go about locating Ralph Leonard's telephone number, that at a point some 200 miles upstate, Element X is starting on its way toward you. <laughs> Mr. Leonard? Yes, who is this? This is your friend, the counselor, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. I'd like to make a deal, Mr. Leonard. Look, I told you we're a not A deal interested. between us. I'm talking about a partnership. A partnership? Right. You play ball with me, and we can make ourselves a little money. Go on, counselor. You interest me. Mrs. Markham need never know your part in it. Want me to make things easy for you, is that it? And we split the profit. Well? Now, look, I told you as far as I was concerned, you... Yes? Uh, suppose we get together and sort of talk this over, huh? Fine. I'll pick the spot. Call you back later. Good, good. I'll be here at my apartment, counselor. <laughs> You smile, don't you, Grant, as you hang up the receiver. You know what Ralph Leonard is thinking, what he's planning. Because he believes you're stupid enough to meet him at a quiet rendezvous where he can do his talking with a gun. You hurry out of the hotel room, get into your car, and drive to Lydia Markham's apartment. Oh, it's you. Uh, may I come in, Mrs. Markham? All right. I asked you to give me a few more days. I know, but I suddenly discovered I have some rather pressing financial obligations to meet, and You I... or your client, Mr. Forbes? Oh, come, Mrs. Markham. Surely you must have guessed your friend Ralph did. Yes. Uh, huh. Aren't you going to ask me to sit down? Oh, oh, of course. And allow me to serve cocktails. Uh, thanks, no. A bit too early in the day yet. Now... As I was saying... You're pressed financially. I am indeed, Mrs. Markham. A few thousand would tide me over for a while. A, a few thousand? You're surprised? Yes, that's all. For the time being, at least. Oh, I see. You needn't mention it to Mr. Leonard. No, no, I won't. But, uh, well, I don't have the money here now. Can you come back tonight? If you don't mind, I'd rather we met somewhere else. Mr. Leonard won't be here. I'd rather we met elsewhere. All right. I'll phone you later. Tell you where. I see. Well, now if there's nothing further... Oh, uh, there is. Oh? I think I will have that martini after all. You've completed the second step of your plan, haven't you, Grant? Yes. And now you must select the scene of the crime. After you leave Mrs. Markham's apartment, you drive back downtown. And only a few blocks from your hotel, you find the perfect setup. A dark, quiet street in the factory and warehouse district. Still unaware that Element X, moving relentlessly toward you, is now less than 50 miles away. <laughs> Thank you.
A few minutes before nine, you step into a phone booth in a drugstore across the street from Ralph Leonard's apartment. Yes, Counselor. I was wondering when you'd call. Still interested in talking business, Mr. Leonard? Of course I am. Good. Suppose we meet on the southeast corner of 17th and Shannon, warehouse district. Know where it is? I'll find it, Counselor. There's a building entrance about 15 feet south. Wait for me in there. I'll leave right away. This is Grant Forbes, Mrs. Markham. Oh, I have the money, 3000 Oh, I'm afraid that's not enough. What? But you said... I know, that was this afternoon. Now I need ten grand. Uh, ten? Ten thousand? But... The... That's right. Oh, but where can I get that kind of money at this time of night? Be reasonable. You look, you've got jewelry. Well, yes, but... That'll do till tomorrow. Tomorrow? When your bank opens, you can get me the rest of the ten thousand. You might as well get used to this. Yours was a very expensive murder, baby. Yes, yes, wasn't it? Oh, and if you're thinking of calling your boyfriend, Mr. Leonard, when I hang up, don't bother. He just left his apartment building. You think of everything, don't you? I do. He thinks he's got a date to meet me. While he's waiting up in Hollywood for me to show, you'll be meeting me somewhere else. Please, please listen to me. Give me a break. I'm sorry. But please, please. Save it, sweetheart. Meet me in half an hour, or I'll write a little letter to the police. No, no, don't do that. Half hour. That's all you have. I'll be waiting in the southeast corner of 17th and Shannon. There's a building entrance about 15 feet south of the corner. I'll be standing in there. You've played the part perfectly, haven't you, Grant? Yes, and the trap is set. Mrs. Markham is desperate now, isn't she? Yes, she's killed before, and you're certain you've driven her to the point where she'll kill again. You hurry to your car, start toward the scene of the rendezvous. While only a few miles away now, Element X is moving toward 17th and Shannon. But you've forgotten all about Element X, haven't you, Ralph? Twenty minutes later, you park your car down the block, move along the darkened street swiftly, move as close to the corner as you dare, see Ralph Leonard standing in the shadows of the building entrance. You turn back now, ease down the street, and turn into a small bar a few doors away. Howdy. Evening. What'll it be? Oh, let's see. uh, Scotch and soda, I guess. Right. Things sort of quiet around here, aren't they? Yep. Not much doing this time of night. Uh-huh. Why stay open? Oh, business picks up later when the ship and the factories get off. A lot of the boys come in for a beer. Oh, I see. Here you are, sir. Thanks. Uh, have one on me? Well, okay. Don't mind if I do. Beer's my drink. Well, here's cheers. To success. Oh, yeah. Ah. Hey, what's that? Sounded like shots to me. It sure did. I'd say we'd better have a look, huh? Stop squeaks! Stop squeaks! Signal lubrication stop squeaks! Signal lubrication stops squeaks is the promise on that sign you've been seeing outside signal service stations. But stopping squeaks is just one of the ways that scientific signal lubrication helps your car. In addition, you enjoy a more comfortable rocking chair ride and lower maintenance costs, all because of the extra steps, extra care that goes into a signal lube job. You see, when a signal dealer lubricates your car, he doesn't take chances on memory to locate the many lubrication points. Instead, he follows Signal's lubrication guide, in which the manufacturer of your car clearly shows every lubrication point and clearly specifies which of Signal's scientifically engineered oils and greases each point needs for longest trouble-free service. Finally, before delivering your car to you, Mr. Signal Dealer checks each point again, just to make double sure not a single part is ever overlooked. That's why we say if you want your car protected by lubrication you can really have confidence in, get your next lube job where you see that sign. 
Signal lubrication stop squeaks. Stop squeaks. Stop squeaks. Lieutenant Driscoll from Homicide stood quietly in front of the entrance to a building some 15 feet south of 17th and Shannon, making notes in a small black book. And from time to time, he glanced down at the bullet-riddled body of Ralph Leonard. A short distance down the block, a police car was parked near a large truck and trailer. The squad car sergeant finished his questioning of the truck driver and came slowly to the spot where Lieutenant Driscoll was standing. You get a statement from the truck driver, Sergeant? Yeah, Lieutenant. According to him, he was barreling down the street at a pretty good clip when suddenly a woman driving a green sedan whipped around the corner and started pumping shots at this man Leonard standing in this entryway here. Mm-hmm. Go on. One of the bullets went wild, hit the front truck tire, and there was a blowout. The truck went out of control, crashed into the front of that barn. Mm-hmm. Truck hit a guy as he was coming out, just missed the bartender. Another guy hurt bad? He died just a few minutes ago. Name's uh, Forbes, Grant Forbes. Grant Forbes? The attorney? That's what his card says. Did you know him, Lieutenant? Yeah. Yeah, I know him. Did uh, Grant say anything before he died? Uh, plenty. Told me who was driving that green car and who fired those shots. Uh, Mrs. Lydia Markham. Element X. Element X? <laughs> That's what Forbes said before he died. That's what he called the truck. Element X. Mm-hmm. What do you suppose he meant by that? Well, it was uh, sort of a theory, Sergeant, between us. Now it's a dead secret. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at the same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Ted Osborne, Joe Gilbert, Eddie Marr, Tom Tully, Jack Moyles, and Britt Wood, with Marvin Miller standing in for Bill Foreman as The Whistler. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Adrian John Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler entitled Prescription for Death, in which a dangerous killer fleeing the police seeks sanctuary in the home of an old sweetheart and her respectable husband and walks into an even more dangerous situation. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>